Well, good morning, people on the internet. I trust you are enjoying your time at home in your bathrobe, perhaps, or your silk PJs. But we're thrilled to have you virtually here with us at CV. And as we all know, it is a interesting time and a little bit scary. But I want to invite you over the next hour to step outside of that fear and to join us in worshiping God and returning to the source and finding strength and focus in Him. So regardless of the posture of your heart right now, hopefully by the end of this service, you'll be feeling encouraged and hopeful. So without further ado, let's praise the Lord.
There is no one high, no one great, no one like our God. There is none more able, Christ our Savior, great and glorious. There is no one high, no one great, no one like our God. There is none more able, Christ our Savior, great and glorious. There is no one high, no one great, no one like there is none more able, Christ our Savior, great and glorious. There is no one high, no one great, no one like our God. There is none more able, Christ our Savior, great and glorious. I'll stand, arms high and heart abandoned in all. Just 
song this morning and it's called heaven fall and just like it's been raining here in los angeles i think all of us are desiring to see the grace of heaven fall and that this virus would be healed worldwide and that the fear that's engrossed so many people would dissipate and be replaced with the peace of christ so let's declare that over ourselves today as we sing this and over our city and our nation and the world changing all around us as heaven's glory makes an entrance I feel it in my bones I feel it on my skin heaven's closer than it's ever been I feel the swell of anticipation We believe anything can happen I feel it in my bones, I feel it on my skin Heaven's closer than it's ever been Sorrow will drown in the joy of heaven. Every stronghold will break in the healer's presence. I feel it in my bones, I feel it on my skin. Heaven's closer than it's ever been. So let it rain. Let heaven fall. Let heaven fall. We want it all. They have it fall. They have it fall. We want it all. And your freedom, and your joy, and your mercy, and your hope. We want it all. They have it fall. They have it fall. We want it all. 
God, God, we need it all right now. We need your grace. We need your power. We need your mercy. We need your hope. We need your glory, God. Because, God, we are a nation. We are a world right now paralyzed by fear, by anxiety, by uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen in the next couple weeks. It changes day to day to day to day, and we just feel like we are cast adrift on the sea without any life rafts, without any lights, without a lighthouse to guide us home. But everything is possible through you. You didn't call us here. You didn't call us to this planet to cower and hide in fear. You called us here to be vessels of your might called us here to be vessels of your mercy, of your glory, of your love. And Lord knows, you know that our neighbors need that right now. So please, God, do not let the enemy instill in us a spirit of timidity, of fear. But as Paul wrote to Timothy, one of love, one of power, and one of a sound mind. Let us be cognizant. Let us be aware of the threat in our midst, God, to our bodies, to our minds. But let us not let that threat prevent us from doing what you've called us here to do. In your name, amen. So typically at this point in the service, we all would turn to our neighbor and greet them and maybe give them a hug. But since you guys are in your living rooms, I'll just wave to you, and maybe you're waving back. I don't know. But either way, we're thrilled that you've tuned in this morning. And uh, next up, we're going to share with you some announcements that are a little bit modified this week for understandable reasons. So I will pass it over to Gabby. Hello, everyone. Welcome to CV Church. My name is Gabby. We're so happy to have you here with us. Um, we also want to say welcome to our new live stream family. Um, we're so happy to have you here with us, too. Um, we are live streaming our service at 930 today, but you can also watch it at any point in the day. Um, you can do this by going onto our website and pressing watch live, or you can search for CV Church on YouTube as well and find it there. Um, so no matter where you are, whether you're here or you're at home, we want to connect with you. And so you can do that by filling out um, a virtual friends card by um, emailing um, info at cvchurch.com or click the contact tab on our website. And so this is just to get us connected with you. You can um, fill out some prayer requests or just tell us how you're doing. We just want to hear from you guys. So thank you so much. And there's going to be some video announcements. Thank you. Get ready. Get set. Go. By Jesus, then this is an awesome opportunity. My name's Marcus. I'm originally from the UK. Um, I've been in the States now almost a decade. I've uh, been in Glendale um, about seven months. Um, the first week we moved here, I took a walk on a Sunday morning and I walked into CVC Church, which was the first church I came across, and I got the most wonderful welcome. And I stayed there and been there ever since. Um, CVC Church is a wonderful place, the people are wonderful, and it really is a home from home here. Uh, it, it, it's like my new family, if you like. Uh, who are all back in the UK and they, sh they should come out here and come to CVC Church. Um, on that subject, Easter is on the way. It's a time, a great time for family and friends and a wonderful time to invite them to church here at CVC. We'll have a wonderful time together and as a photographer, maybe you'll see me and I'll take your picture. Good morning. Good morning, especially to our online CV Church. Uh, we're so far, we're keeping record. There's about 85, 90 of you that have jumped on so far. We're so glad to have you here. And uh, we're excited to see what God wants to do in all of this. We believe that God is doing something new. 
and we could be doing church a lot differently than we ever anticipated. This could just be part of the revival that we've been asking God for as a local church. So, and as around the world. So I'm very, very excited about that. Just a several, a few announcements. We want to welcome uh, five new members this morning. So uh, let's do that. This is Christian Green, Daniel Kim, Andres Moreno, Kim Pisano, and Norma Tan. If you're at home, would you clap with us and let's welcome them here. We're excited to keep moving forward. Uh, there will be no uh, Meet the Pastors today. Uh, you're going to find that almost everything in our church is going to morph a little bit and change during these times. Someone came to me and said they were just very angry, felt that God was, Satan was winning. He's not winning. Let me say it again. Satan's not winning. On the day that Jesus Christ was crucified, Everybody on the planet thought that God had disappeared, but he had not. His greatest miracle was about to take place in raising Jesus Christ from the dead. Guess what, church? Same thing is happening right now. With all the panic, with all the fear, with all the terror, with all the death, God is up to his best, and he's going to use you and I. So I'm very excited about this, as you can tell. We are going to have Thursday night prayer here. So if you'd like to come, we'd love to have you come. We'll spread out and we're going to intercede for an hour. Amen. And we're going to continue to see God do great things in our midst. Before I jump right into panic proof, it was kind of exciting this morning um, as I was parking my car off the property. Uh, I was walking down here and a woman comes up to me and she goes, panic proof? And just started laughing. She said, I walk by this church every day and I saw what you were speaking on. She says, sounds like you've got it. You're understanding. <laughs> so we had a nice little uh, chat and it, it, was, uh, it was exciting. But as we start this morning, I want to remind you, as people have, who have put their faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we come to an unshakable kingdom and we come to a God that is unchanging. Here's a few things as we start this morning about how do you panic proof your mind? How do you panic proof your soul and your relationships? The first is this. Scripture says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Theology, you call that the immutability of God. In those things, he's unchanging. Here's a few other things that he's unchanging about. Now, uh, this. God sees what you and I are going through. He sees it. He knows it. He's aware of it. Secondly, God cares about what you and I are going through. That will never change, regardless of the pain, regardless of the frustration, regardless of what you're going through at work, financially, all the different ways that things are being challenged right now because of this pandemic. God doesn't change. God's care for you doesn't change. God's ability to see what you're going through does not change. God has the power to change everything in our life. And today as we pray, and if you're not aware, the national day of prayer is today. Uh, President Trump called that. God bless him. I'm glad. I got a little email. <clears throat> Many of you did too. And it shows him <laughs> with his hands <laughs> together and bowing his head and praying. And I thought, God bless him. May God continue to change him, get a hold of him, and cause him to surrender his life to Christ. So we're, good. we're glad about that, right? Yeah. God's Power never changes. God always acts out of his goodness. We sing the song, God is good and I am loved. God cannot do evil. He's not bad. He's only good. God is a master at taking these terrible things and turning them into good. Right? We know that all God causes all things to work together for the good. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. No one over 2,000 years ago on Good Friday thought anything was good when they saw their hope murdered on the cross. Nobody thought anything good could come out of that. Only God can do that. And God's plan is better 
then yours are my plan. And he's working his plan as you surrender and you submit to it. So you, uh, you have notes, correct? Isn't that exciting? If you're at home and you're, uh, you're CV Church online, you can print out the notes. You can print out the script right off of your uh, computer. So isn't that good? So if you're online, you're home. Let's just clap about that. That's a good thing. I see you. Hopefully you see me. Uh, As we started 2020, the American Psychological Association took their annual survey concerning the stresses that caused people the greatest amount of fear and anxiety and stress and panic. And the leading stressors that they talked about before the virus was health care, the upcoming election, and mass shooting. More than half of U.S. adults, 56 identify the presidential election as a significant stressor. In 2016, it was 52 percent. It's gone up. I read another uh, headline recently that said personal stress worldwide is at world record levels. This is the highest it's been since World War II. Today, suicide in America and has, uh, uh, and has passed car crashes as the number one injury death in America. I read another statistic that identified leading stressors as your job, money, health, relationships, poor diet, media overload. This was number seven, but I think it should be closer like a number two or three, a lack of sleep. We don't prize sleep in America. God created you, church, and all of you who are watching, who uh, uh, maybe you haven't come to Christ, you haven't surrendered your life to Christ yet. Hey, let me tell you, God designed you to sleep. When you sleep and you're getting six to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, God is at work touching your brain, touching your emotions, touching your nervous system. Everything in your body is getting revived and renewed when you get good sleep. So uh, too many of us poo-poo it. That creates a big stressor for people. Now, it's obvious that the coronavirus has become uh, the number one source of panic and stress right now because it's impacting every one of us and in all of our lives. I want to look at uh, one of the more well-known passages in the Bible on how to actually panic-proof your life in today's culture. We hear about panic room, we hear about panic attacks, we hear about panic anxiety, but God says he's the only one that has actually panic proof for your life. So I want to look at that with you today. Uh, In this passage, it actually comes with a panic proof guarantee. It's not guaranteed by a doctor, but it's guaranteed by God himself. You will want to take notes, you'll want to... Pay attention, and I want to encourage you. If you're not in a small group and you want to be, would you email me at scott.wood at cvchurch.com? You want to get into a small group because that's going to be the main way that you're able to have us, give us the ability to love you, care for you, and touch you in ways that you're not being touched. One of the plans of the enemy in coronavirus is to isolate you to make you feel alone. We have a very good friend who uh, is involved in part of our church and he just said, I haven't left my house for two weeks and I'm not coming. And listen, when you, when you allow fear and panic to take over, that will raise your stress, that will raise your sense of feeling abandoned, feeling isolated. So if you are in a small group, I encourage you to keep going every week. Small group leaders that are here, small group leaders, if you're at home and you're watching with your families or watching with your small group or you're going to be watching this uh, in the near (coughs) day or two or three. Here's what I would say to you. Make sure that you're taking care of the health uh, protocols in your small group. So, again, you want to make sure I'm just going to say let's. Let's touch each other as le- least as possible. Maybe not even touch at this point, but we can touch each other by our verbal comments. So you're going to hear me say to every one of you, 
I love you deeply. I care for you. You are a gift to me. I value you. And I will do anything to help you get through this time. Let's make sure we're upping our verbal love to one another, each other. Does that make sense? We can't physically touch like we'd like to. I'm a toucher. I love to touch you. I love to hug you. I love to do those kinds of things. But right now, that's not the best thing to do because that's how we pass on germs. Okay? So... Uh, make sure you're using antiseptic uh, stuff at your home. Uh, before I came here today, Kathy wasn't there. I just cleaned the house. Uh, I just went through and I was spraying everything. I, you know, it's kind of like a gun. I, I'm, at, I'm at war. And uh, it's a good thing. <laughs> Panic-proof your life. What does that mean? If you don't panic, and, f- and if you don't panic-proof your life, fear's going to wear you down. Our theme in 2020 is this, love God and love people. When it comes to panic, worry, and fear, loving God and loving people means that we will not settle for fear and isolation and abandonment anymore. We say no to this in Jesus' name. You can change if you will humble yourself and trust your life to Jesus Christ. He can help you become the calm presence in any room. Kathy and I were standing at uh, Whole Foods yesterday, and there was a woman behind me, and we started to talk, and she asked me if I could reach out and get her a few things, and I did. Turns out she's a marriage family therapist. She works in LA Unified District, and uh, I just said to her, "Can can I pray for you? I want to speak a blessing over you. Oh, would you? And her eyes began to tear up. And I said, I'm praying for you, Sylvia, that was her name, that the Lord bless you, that he gives you every advantage during this time of disadvantage, that he protects you, that you would send Sylvia his smile. She's weeping by now, and I cannot hold back from sobbing. Don't know who's all watching and really didn't care on a mission. May he be gracious to you. May he just lavish his favor upon you. And Sylvia, may God give you peace, that sense of well-being, that sense of contentment in Jesus' name. She just looked at me. She knew as a pastor. She asked me what I did. She said, thank you, pastor. That's how we combat panic. That's how we combat fear. I want to confess over all of our CV Church family this morning, online, and I want to confess right now over our city and over our state and over our nation, I confess that the coronavirus will not destroy us. It will not destroy us spiritually or emotionally or relationally or financially or vocationally or intellectually or physically. God is good and we are loved and we are protected and we are cared for. So I want to start by having you read with me verse 7 of Philippians chapter 4. Online church, you should be able to see it on our on the screen. Would you all read it out loud with me? This is Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. This is from the Living Bible. Let's begin. If you do these things, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts quiet and your heart at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. How do you know when you have the peace of God that can exceed anything that you can understand? You're in a situation when you have no logical reason to be at peace, but you are. I have to say to you, the more frightening things get, the more scary things get, the more calm I become. I just do. And people will come to me, and I want to make sure I'm not insensitive to the rest of you. I don't want to be insensitive to people that are freaking out and panicking. Uh, I had to intervene in a fight at Sprouts. Believe it or not, two seniors. A man and a woman. And a man was cursing and calling this woman every vile name, and she didn't know what to do. And I said, ma'am, would you please just go get in your car? Back it up. Let's get this guy out of here so you can do what you need to do. And she just said... Thank you. She saw me two or three times. She said, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And God just wants to use us instead of panic to be peacemakers. Instead of panic makers, peacemakers. That's good. (laughs) 
In this passage, Paul gives us six things that will help you when you're in total chaos, when you're wanting to totally melt down, stress, be in tension. You can still have God's peace on the inside of you. Peace that exceeds, surpasses anything you can understand. Would you follow along as I read from Philippians 4, 4 to 13? Remember, Paul was writing this. He was in jail. Paul was probably outside of Jesus, the most persecuted, the most misunderstood, the most beaten, the most slandered believer on this planet. And he's writing the most powerful things about how to panic proof your life. Listen to what he says. Always be full of the joy of the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate and gentle in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and ask him for all that, and thank him for all that he's done. Then you will experience God's peace. Notice there's things we do. Then we can experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that you and I can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, brothers and sisters, there's one final thing. This is a very important part of this peace proof panic proofing process fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable fix your mind on what's right what's pure what's lovely what's admirable think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me i heard one commentator say this virus is just working as a reset because the majority of americans did not wash their hands enough are not getting enough sleep, eating all kinds of junk food. Most Americans have some kind of underlying negativity that's going on in their body. So when this comes on, it just exacerbates everything. I just heard a, uh, a teaching by Rick uh, Warren, Pastor Rick Warren, who's he's just the most amazing guy I know personally. And I looked at Kathy and I said, I think he's having respiratory problems. And he said, I've been having pneumonia. Matter of fact, because he has a specific problem with adrenaline in his brain, he runs sick a lot. And he is amazing at what God is doing through him and how he's mobilizing the church to be the church. It's phenomenal. So you keep into practice all that you've learned and received. Everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. And the God of peace will be with you. How I praise the Lord that you're concerned about me. I won't continue on. That's good. All right. Look at verse 13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Would you say that with me? Let's quote that together. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Let's say it again. Say, for we can do. For we can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So let's look at these six uh, points to panic proof quickly. Look at number one. Teach yourself not to worry. Paul says, worry about nothing. He would not tell you to do that if it's not possible for you to do that. It's not my job. It's not my money. It's not my health. It's not my relationships to keep me at, up at night or keep you up at night. It is worrying about these issues that what keeps you up. Verse 8 says this, don't worry about anything. In other words, God says there's a reason. There's never a reason for you and I to worry or to fret or be anxious. You're always going to have circumstances that withstand you. Even some of the things we're doing now in our church and going online, people criticize and people are not necessarily on board with everything we do. You can't avoid that. I have enough to worry 28-7. I'm just not going to do it. He says, don't. He says, stop it. In other words, Jesus taught us about worry in his Sermon on the Mount. And he gives us four facts about worry, which will help to teach you and I not to worry. What are they? Look at um, the first one. Worry is unreasonable. It's a taskmaster. In Matthew 6, 24 and 25, no person can serve two masters. You're going to hate one, you're going to love the other. What's he talking about? 
You're going to be devoted to one, you're going to despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And let's face it, that's one of the major issues on everybody's mind. If you're in the stock market this morning, most likely you've lost. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe money's tight. I have to make a choice every day not to worry about that. That is why I tell you, do not worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food, drink, enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food in your body more than clothing? The other day I had gone to Costco, I had gone to uh, Whole Foods, gone to Trader Joe's, gone to Rouse, gone to Vons, gone to, uh, I said Sprouts, yeah. It was amazing. People were fighting, pushing each other around. I'm just sitting here going, Jesus. I'm so, as a matter of fact, somebody grabbed for something. I said, oh, do you want that? Here, you take it. God's going to supply. I'm not going to get nervous over this. And when I do, I'm going to do what God says and understand that worry is unreasonable. Look at the next one. Worry is unnatural. Jesus says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns for your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you more valuable to them than they are? What Jesus is saying, the entire creation of God, humans are the only ones that worry. He takes care of them. The good news is that God says you can learn how to not worry and how not to be stressed out because you understand that he loves you, that he cares for you, and that you're valuable to him. The, uh, physicians say many people could leave the, po- the hospitals today if they would simply learn to deal with their guilt, their resentment, their fear, and their worry. Proverbs 12, 25 says this, worry weighs a person down. Encouraging word cheers a person up. The word worry means this, to strangle, to choke. Worry is unnatural because it chokes the joy, happiness, and faith right out of you. Worry makes a person heavy and depressed. But look at just the opposite. Would you read with me Proverbs 1430 uh, online church? Would you read with us? Let's begin. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. <coughs> you could say stress is like cancer in the bones. Worry is like cancer in the bones. Anxiety is like cancer in the bones. A peaceful heart, a heart that trusts God to provide and to care and, prov- and, and you trust in his strength, that is health to your body. Look at the next one. Worry is unhelpful. Jesus says this in verse 27. Can all worries add a single moment to your life? Answer, no. In fact, it will steal moments from your life. Every moment you and I worry, every moment we're stressed, every moment that we're anxious about our own spiritual lives, about our emotional, our relational, our financial, our vocational, our intellectual, and our physical, it is unhelpful and it's stealing things from you. I want us, church, and I want us to impact our community in such a way that we make a commitment. We are not going to let the enemy of our soul steal any more from us. Amen. Online church? I heard you. Look at the last one. Worry is unnecessary. In Matthew 6, 30, Jesus says, if God cares so wonderfully for the wild flowers that are here today and they're thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Now, here's the challenge. Why do you have such little faith? May I suggest, loved ones, if you are being eaten up with worry, if you are not being able to sleep well, it is a, not a virus issue, it's a faith issue. Let me say this. The question is, who's your daddy? Who are you putting all your trust in? Because he says, I'm going to take care of you. 
Does that make sense? Look at number two. So he says, stop worrying. The second thing he says, talk to God about everything. Philippians 4, 6b says this. Instead, pray about everything. In other words, don't panic. Don't worry. But worship. Stop talking yourself and start talking to God. Do you ever talk to yourself? I've been catching myself lately. I talk to myself a little too much about this, and I'm learning to just stop it and say, Scott, it doesn't matter what, what you're saying right now. Listen to God and say what he's saying. He allows problems to come into our lives so that we can become expert in asking our Father God to help us. I've been watching videos of uh, Brady with his mama, with Kelsey, and he's so funny. He'll just stop and go, Mama! And she goes, yes, Brady. And he'll go on the line, Mama, I see you, son. Mama. He just keeps going, Mama, Mama, Mama. Watch me, see me, love me, care for me. She's one of the best mothers I know. But as little children, we have insatiable needs, do we not? Daddy, Mommy, look at me, look at me. Hear God say to you today, I'm the God that sees I see everything about you. I care about everything for you. And I am working behind the scenes. You don't see it. You don't feel it. But I'm the God that never changes. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Talk to me about all of this. Romans 8, 31, B, and 32. Would you read this out loud with me? Let's begin. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Yes! God is for us. God is for you. Look at number three. Tell God what you need. Stop worrying. Talk to God about everything. Number three, tell God what you need. This is specificity. Look at 4, 6, C. Tell God what you need. This is where you take our acronym SURF VIP. S-E-R-F-V-I-P. What do you talk to God about in prayer? This. Your spiritual life. God, I just, I'm having a hard time making contact with you because I'm so concerned. Talk to him about it. Lord, make yourself real. I need you to penetrate through my emotions, penetrate through my fear, penetrate through my panic and tear, and he will. Emotional, pray about those things. Surrender them to him. Relational, financial, vocational, intellectual, and physical. Take those areas and tell him specifically what you're needing. This will turbocharge your prayer life. If you ever thought, I wonder what I'm to pray for. Are you kidding me? We have so much to pray for, don't we? Look at number four. Stop worrying. Talk to God about everything. Tell him what you need. Number four, thank God for all that he has done for you. Philippians 4, 16, 6, D and 7 says this. And thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. Now notice that. Make the decision to stop worrying. Do not let panic take over your life. Kick it out. Tell him. Talk to him. Three, tell him what you need. Four, begin to look back over your life. If you've, uh, there's been over 33 major national pandemics over the last how many years? And God has been with us through everyone, has he not? We didn't think we'd make it through uh, SARS. We didn't think we'd make it through 9-11. Uh, but we're making it. And let me just say this. You, you want to make sure you're listening about to truth and not, not false facts. There's a lot of false facts and fake news out there. Okay? The truth is this. The virus, they come, but then they'll go and they'll die. You're on a bell curve. I've been hearing a lot about this lately. Right now, more cases are going to happen. They just will. There's about 50 deaths so far in this last quarter 
Unbelievable compared to how many died of the last pandemic. So don't panic about this. And if you are exposed or if you are sick, do everything you know to do to take care of it. Okay? I'm taking oxidants. I'm doing oregano. My wife hates it. smells terrible. I'm taking a couple daubers every other day. Just blows that stuff out of the water. Taking high amounts of vitamin C. I just refuse to let this thing get me down. And so you want to make sure you're doing what you can do and then expect God to do what you can't do. Thank God for all he has done. Then what? You will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything that you can understand. And notice this. His peace, his shalom, his well-being, his contentment, his health, his power is what will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, teach yourself not to worry. It's a decision. It's a choice you make. I am not going to worry. Talk to God about everything. Then tell him everything you need. Be specific. And then thank him for everything he's ever done for you. And then Paul says the most incredible supernatural thing will happen. Peace, which is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Peace will rule your mind. There's a little saying I picked up from Dr. Dennis. And when I first heard it, I about fell off my seat. He says, when you're in a room, when you're with your family, you be the calm in the room. You be the calm. The virus is contagious. Peace is contagious. Amen. Calm is contagious. Courage, courage is contagious. Tenacity is contagious. We just need to focus on the right things. I know I'm not supposed to touch my tongue, but it's just my tongue. My tongue's not going to touch you, so we're okay. Paul says, peace will guard your heart and thoughts. In the Hebrew, your heart is the control center of your life. It includes your thoughts, your feelings, and your will. All of your life, Jesus says, flows out of your heart. Proverbs 4.23, this is something if you don't have it memorized, I encourage you to memorize it. Since this is one of the lead ways you panic-proof your life. Would you read uh, Proverbs 4.23 with me? Let's begin. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Online church, I can't hear you. Let's say it again. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. That's amazing. Your mind, your emotions, and your will will direct the actual direction of your life during this virus. It's your heart. It's your control panel. Notice what Paul says gives you access. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. It is your relationship to Father God through Jesus Christ that you have access to God's presence and to his power, and to his promises, and to his purity, and to his peace. You cannot have the peace of God without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In a famous prophecy in Isaiah 9-6, we're told a child will give, he will give to us, and one of his names is called Prince of Peace. If you haven't humbled yourself yet, if you haven't confessed your sin to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do that today. He's your only way to experience the kind of peace that stops you from panicking. It stops you from freaking out. It stops you from being overwhelmed with stress and worry and fear and anxiety. He gives us a fifth step to do. Think thoughts that are noble. Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says this. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice 
everything you've learned and received from me and everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. So peace of God, loved ones, doesn't come just because you say, God, I need your peace. He's given us things to do. I need to work on stop worrying. This virus is going to impact the people the worst who are chronic worriers. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it with people. They're tied in knots because they brought into this panic experience all kinds of undone, unresolved issues where they were not trusting God spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, vocationally, intellectually, and physically. And now they're, they're vulnerable. So we're in a war right now. You're in a war for your soul to guard your heart and to guard, guard your mind. Now notice what he says. What do you do in this war? You fix your thoughts. This is my translation. Obsess. I'm good at that. <laughs> my wife just said the other day, well, you're just, I can't deter you from anything. Once you set your mind on something, and I go, well, that's a good thing. And Paul says on this, set your mind on these things. What things? Things that are true. God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is the measure of truth. Whatever conforms to the gospel, that is what is true. So your ethics and your morals are incredibly important. You are to let everything be conformed to the truth that is in Jesus Christ. Number two, things that are honorable. What does that mean? Those things that are no noble, those things that are worthy of respect. Focus on these things in your mind. And I just want to say this, CV Church. You want to focus on giving away. Now, some of you might disagree with what I've done in the last week or two. I saw two young high school girls when it was pouring down rain, just standing out, sopping wet. I jumped in my car. I ran over there. I rolled the window down, and I said, can I take you home? I know you don't know me. I can see it in your eyes. You're wondering, who is this guy? I'm the pastor of that building right over there. Why don't you let me take you home? And they did. I drove them home, and they were incredibly grateful. Then the next day, I was driving down the street. I noticed a guy who works at Ralph's, and he was standing out in the rain at a bus stop. I chose to stop. He looked at me, and I said, you recognize my face, don't you? Yeah, I'm Scott. I know you're Brandon. Are you going to work? Yes. Can I take you to work? He said, you do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I stood in the market, uh, the, the parking lot of Trader Joe's. It was sopping wet, and people were just leaving their carts out in the uh, parking lot, and it was a zoo. I just simply, getting sopping wet, just went ahead, took the carts. I asked people, may I take your cart for you? And put it away. You conquer fear, you conquer panic by <clears throat> not being worried about yourself and set yourself to serve somebody else. Amen. Now I'm going to talk about how we can do that. Uh, look at number three. What is right? Right is always defined by God. Pure. It's holy and untainted. Think about those things. Obsess on them. Lovely. Those things that are lovable. Admirable. Con conduct that is spoken well of. Excellence. Moral excellence. And praiseworthy. Conduct and keeping with conduct, keeping with God's own righteousness. Now, I want to close with this. Number six. How do you panic proof? Teach yourself not to worry. Two, talk to God about everything. Three, tell God what you need. Four, thank God for all that he's done for you. Five, think thoughts that are noble. And on this one, train yourself to be Content. Paul writes this. For I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. This is profound. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I turned to somebody in the line. I said, you know, you stand to weather this panic the best by having as a least amount of needs as possible. 
when I hear people say, I got to have my coffee or I'm going to die. <laughs> really? Really? Well, for some of you, maybe, but <laughs> I, I doubt it. I have to have this. I've got to be able to do this. I've got, no, no, you don't. Paul says, listen, in Jesus Christ, you can learn to be content. That's the secret of winning over worry, fear, and panic. The less you need, the less vulnerable you're going to be. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. He says, whether my stomach is full or empty, with plenty or little. Next. For I can do, here's the secret. I can do everything through Christ who gives me Strength. This is the sixth step that the Bible gives us so that we can live a reduced life and that we can panic proof our lives. It goes back to what Jesus said about serving the two masters. You can't serve money and God at the same time. You just cannot. So as we close this morning, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I'm asking you to get in a, your small group this week. My small group meets tomorrow night. I've already checked to make sure that uh, the polys who house our small group say it's okay. Uh, I even said I'll donate a cleanser if they want to spray the house down before we come, and then I'll help them spray it down when we leave. I um, want you to all be meeting in your small groups. If you don't have a small group, we would love to help you get in a small group. There's no reason to feel abandoned. There's no reason to feel alone. And then as I close this morning, I want to talk to you about two ministries that I believe we need to get started. We've needed to have them start a long time ago. And if you want to be a part of this um, uh, online church, you can just email me at scott.wood at cvchurch.com and say, I want to be a part of this. First one is we want to develop care calling. We want to develop teams of people. I'm talking to my staff when we're done here today. We're going to sit down and talk about, okay, we need to, we're going to print out all of our members' names, all the attenders in the last two to three to four years, and, and I'm basically going to have to have all, I'm going to ask you who called to say, I'm calling on behalf of pastors Scott and Kathy. I want to ask you three quick questions. How are you doing? Do you have any needs that if we could, we could meet? What's your prayer request? You can do this in two, three, four minutes. You don't have to take an hour to two hours to do this. We want to make sure that nobody drops through the cracks. But in order to do that, I have to have your current phone number and I have to have your current email. So if you've changed your numbers, you've changed your email, would you ta uh, email me at scott.wood at cvchurch.com and let me know so that we can get on this immediately. Then I want to think about putting together what we're going to call care kits. So what I'm asking you to do is specifically, if you've been to the store and you can't find things, if you feel you're running out of things and you're in danger of not having what you need, we want to amass what is, what is the needs of the church and put a little care kit together. And then we're going to need to have some of us who will be runners. You'll just go. You can wear gloves, push the doorbell, or text them, tell them you're coming. You drop the care kit in the front of the door, and you take off. You don't wait for any, oh, this is so great, what a blessing. Just drop it and run. We want to make sure that people know that we care. Right? Isn't that good? You know, how many of us give something, then you know, like, did you want to say something to me? Do you want to tell me how good I am for what I just did? Drop it and run, man. We just want to make sure that people know that we are caring for them. Care call, care kits. Isn't that great? Yeah. And you can be involved. You can be involved in helping us get the material for the care kits. That's going to be a, a real chore, isn't it? If you've been to the store lately, let me recommend. If you're going to go to any of these stores, you need to know when they open. And you probably need to go an hour early. Uh, I was in line at Costco for 45 minutes. We got in there, I got my toilet paper, I got my paper towels, I got what I needed, and within an hour, it was decimated. I went back two days later at 11.15, I did not get in line, and it was all gone. So you have to be smart, you have to be determined, but we can do this in Jesus' name, amen? amen. Let's uh, pray, I wanna close in prayer, and I wanna pray for our nation.
Uh, I'm very grateful that uh, President Trump has called for uh, a day of prayer. This is so important. Would you pray with me? Father, we're just so grateful that you never change, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father, we bring our nation to you today. And we ask, first of all, that you would stop and heal the polarization and the divide in our culture. Lord, the enemy is trying to stir things up and turn ethnic groups against each other, turn political groups against each other. And we just say in the name of Jesus, stop. Lord, we ask that you would cause people to focus on the bigger issues. We need to love each other. We need to serve each other. Lord, I pray that you would help us, that you would give us what we need, Lord, financially and materially to, to put these care kits together. So I pray you'd just be putting it on people's hearts, Lord, to help us in this, to uh, be willing to take the care kits to people's homes. Lord, be willing to call and just say on the behalf of Pastor Scott and Kathy and the CV Church, we just want to touch base with you and make sure that you're not falling through the cracks. And Lord, that they're called each week. We just want to up our care. <clears throat> we want to up the love. Lord, we pray for all those who have been diagnosed with the virus. We just ask Jesus now in your name, by your stripes, they were healed. We ask for a mass healing globally. Lord, for the, the, the nations that have been so impacted, China, Japan, South Korea, Italy, Lord, all those countries in that loop, all the countries in, in Europe where a travel ban has been uh, called for. We ask that you touch those that have the virus and then, Lord, we ask that the virus would go no, no further to those who have been exposed, that it die in Jesus' name. And we're asking for a supernatural intervention in Jesus' name. Lord, one of our politicians not too long ago said, you just need to stop praying because it doesn't do any good. Well, we know that that's not true. Lord, we know that you call for us to be a praying church, a praying nation. That you said, Lord, if we would repent, if we would confess of our sins and turn to you and acknowledge you as our God, that you would hear from us when we pray. So that's the most important thing we can do. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray you protect uh, all of our government officials, Lord, that they wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't come down so that, with this virus so that they can lead to their fullest capacity. Lord, we pray for, that your church would just rise, Lord, would rise up to meet this challenge. Lord, and we just thank you for it. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you love us and that we love each other. And then we're going to rise up and we're going to panic proof. We refuse to cave into worry. Lord, would you catch us when we're worrying? Catch us when our brains are on fire with panic and terror and all the questions we can ask. We ask that you would forgive us, Lord, for our faithlessness. And we choose to stop worrying. And then, Lord, we choose to start talking to you and to tell you everything that we need. And then, Lord, that uh, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all the healing. We thank you for all the times we could have died and you've protected us. We could have been sick and you delivered us. We thank you for it. Lord, we want to thank those thoughts that are conducive to keeping peace. And then, Lord, I pray that we would end up being the most contented people there is. Because we have a good God. We have a Father who loves us. We have a Father who meets our needs. We have a Father who sees everything we're going through. We have a Father that cares about everything we're going through. We have a Father that will take everything negative and turn it to our good. Because we love you and we're called according to your purpose. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I love you, CV Church. Love you dearly. Kathy and I are praying for you every day. And uh, let's just up our prayer. Let's up our love. Let's up our care in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Uh, good morning and welcome home, CV Church, and welcome home to our uh, live streaming church family. Um, if your guest is with us this morning, 
We ask that you feel no pressure or obligation to give. It's really our purpose to give to you, obviously, today um, to observe sanitary best practices. We're not going to be passing the offering plate. So if you're here with us in the church, um, you, can put, uh, you can put your offering in the foyer boxes on the way out. You can always, obviously, use the, um, use the push pay and, and the internet uh, by going on cvchurch.com and clicking on the Give tab. And if you're out there today and you're a first-time guest, we ask that you feel no pressure or obligation to give. Obviously, if you would like to give, you may. You can go to the website, click on the Give tab, or you can use the Push Pay app. If you search CV Church, it will come up. We're the one in 91214 La Crescenta, California, and it'll get you to the right place. Um, I pray that God, for everyone who's giving today, I pray that God, who is our provider, will multiply a hundredfold everyone who's giving today sacrificially and will open the windows of heaven for you. Now, we are live streaming services at 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Obviously, we're just getting ready to, to wrap up. But as soon as we're done here, it's, it'll be available on the, on the YouTube channel, also available from the website. You can get there by going to cvchurch.com, click on Watch Live. Or if you're on a smart TV, you can go to, to YouTube, search CV Church LA, and we will come up and you can watch this live stream. You can share this live stream with family and friends. And to our family out there, we want to hear from you. Go to cvchurch.com. You can click on the contact tab, or you could email Pastor Scott gave out his personal email, scott.wood at cvchurch.com, or you can email info at cvchurch.com. We will route it to the right person, and we will, we will definitely get back to you. You can tell us what your needs are, what your prayer requests are, if you want to join a small group, um, whatever you need. So thank you, and uh, Kathy's up. So I already heard from one of you uh, online, and thank you so much. I want to just share this uh, with everybody so that you know we are really impacting each other. Great sermon. I cried all the way through because I want to shout these truths from the mountaintops. I want to always be the calm in the room to change the atmosphere around me. I am not panicked, and I'm only keeping low because of the CDC guidelines. I want to be a loving neighbor. Love you. This is from Heather Williams. So Heather, thank you for texting me. And um, to everybody online, we do want to hear from you because here's the thing. We are only going to get through this together. This weekend, for some of us, has been a real gift we needed to stay home. We've all been running around like crazy. We needed a forced staycation. So uh, where we had no conflicts, nobody telling us to come here or go there, stay home and rest. So it's been really healthy for us. Um, some of you maybe, you know, were like kicking and screaming to stay home. But I know some of you, because I've spoken with you, have really enjoyed this. You wouldn't have chosen it, but you've really enjoyed this. So we're basically right now in two groups. We are, in, we are either people who need help or we are people who can give help. So we really want to make sure that if you give help, you find the people who need help. That's what we're going to be focusing on now in these next days. We're going to be meeting together. Um, but small groups are going to be how we move forward. If you're not in a small group right now or any kind of a team, like a wor our worship team is a small group. If you're not in a small group, you can start one. And if so, contact us immediately. Because here's the thing. I've talked to people this week. I know of at least five people who were laid off work this week. That's just for me talking to a couple of people. How many people are freaking out simply because they don't have a job? We keep saying that the millennials are fine because they're not going to get sick. Many of the millennials I know are musicians or in the entertainment industry. 
they don't have any work. In fact, they don't know of any work for months. So we can't just say, oh, the millennials are fine. They won't be affected by this. Everyone is affected. So all of us must move through this together. We've had a great weekend. We've rested up. But now is not time to rest. From this moment forward, find the group, the people, the place where you can give. That's the only way to do this. This is how CV Church will stay connected. We don't know how long this is going to last. But we do know if we stick together, we're going to come flying through, flying through this. So uh, let's see. Oh, I think I just got another text. All right, from Amanda Jacobs. Everybody, stick together. Contact each other. Phone calls are so old-fashioned, but phone calls are going to be life-giving. Everybody can make a phone call. All right, God bless you. Uh, Through the phone is how you can reach out and touch somebody. So since we're not going to touch each other physically, we can touch each other spiritually. I want to close the service with this song called The Blessing. It's by Kerry Job and Elevation Church. Um, I ask that you just worship with us. If you find you need to leave, that, that would be up to you. Uh, online, CV Church, um, if just relax, worship with us. This is a very powerful song. It's from Numbers chapter 6. God told Moses to tell the Aaronic priesthood, I want you to bless the people. And this is a powerful blessing. So we want to close with a worship of the blessing. Would you join us? Lord
His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon Before you go, God is already working. I shared with you about people being laid off. I got a text from Anthony Lai. He said I could share it. He said, my company is hiring, but maybe not for musicians. I'm looking for a few extra technicians with minimal experience that my team will train. I can offer commute with me from La Crescenta. If you're interested, w we'll even post this, www.poc.com. Go to Career tab on this website. Uh, my division is Products and Engineering Division. They must have a high school diploma and a US citizen. We have full benefits and choices of HMO and PPO. Two additional technician openings will be posted this Wednesday. This is the church in action right now. Our best days are ahead. All right. So go in strength, go in courage, go in purpose, and go in power in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you.